Hello, I'm Uzi from ARI and I've got some exciting news for you today. ARI just launched a brand new OpenFX plugin for simulating analog film. So let's have a look. ARI has used its decades of expertise of film and digital workflows by building products like the ARI laser, the ARI scanner, the Alexa camera family and the all new color science reveal to come up with an amazing easy and authentic way to simulate 35 mm film for images shot on ARRI cameras. Images from other cameras can of course be used as well as long as you use an ARRI color managed workflow. So here is what it does. It adds authentic film grain and it will adjust the MTF curve of Alexa 35 images to replicate the sharpness of film. It adds film halation inherent to shooting on negative film. It adjusts the colors to how film negative does react to colors. It can apply gate weave to get the slightly unsteady image you sometimes see in film footage. All of these features can be easily adjusted with a simple series of menu choices and sliders. We have set out to create a plugin that makes developing a film look as easy as possible by distilling the many possible options into the ones that we believe capture the essence of film. Let's start with a quick installation guide for the ARI Film Lab plugin in DaVinci Resolve. First, you'll want to download the plugin installer from RevisionFX official download site and choose the version for your operating system. Once downloaded, run the installer and follow the prompts. For this tour, I will mainly be using a Mac with DaVinci Resolve. Later, I will jump into Baselight and Nuke and show you how easily the plugin works in these applications as well. When I start up Resolve after the installation and go to the main preference by clicking on the DaVinci Resolve menu, I will find the plugin in the video plugin settings and if everything loaded or right, there will be a check mark in front of it. So let's import some log C4 images and set up the project for ARI color management reveal. In the project settings, let's navigate to the color management page and set the timeline color space to ARI log C4 and the output color space to Rec. 709 scene. Because I work on a Mac and I want my UI image to match the Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 image I see on my grading monitor. Now I will set the correct ARI reveal LUT as an output lookup table. I've downloaded the reveal LUT set from ARI's website beforehand. I will also check that my 3D lookup table interpolation is set to tetrahedral. The results of the plugin are only correct when using ARI's DRTs for log C3 or log C4. All of these DRTs can be downloaded from our website. We are currently working on our ACES 2.0 integration, which we don't support yet. Now let's create a timeline and cut the log C4 shots into the timeline. Most often when using a look plugin, I want the look to work across a whole scene after the clips have had their individual grading. To have the plugin at the end of your grading pipeline can be beneficial. Just think if you would have the grain added as a first step and you would then start pushing parts of the image in brightness, then the grain strengths would vary in these regions. So I will place the shots into a group and go to the group post grading page. I will place the plugin into my node. If this is the first time you're using the plugin, you will need to press the manage license button to activate your license. Here you can insert the license key through copy and paste through a license file or you can connect to a floating license server. If you just want to evaluate the plugin, you can use it for seven days as a trial version. Now let's have a look at the different options and sliders we offer in the plugin. At the top, we can choose between three grain profiles, 500T, 200T and 50D. Underneath this, we can influence the grain strengths and the halation intensity. I have zoomed into the image to see the grain more clearly. These grain profiles are not designed to perfectly emulate a specific stock, but instead represent a look that we think is characteristic of many different styles of stocks with similar ASA ratings. Here I have the same amount of control over the halation effect, which emulates the red-orange halo around highlights and high contrast edges caused by light reflecting through film layers. 
Next, let's try the five color profiles offered in the color dropdown. Premiere, Classic, Live, Reversal and Bleach Bypass. With the slider underneath, we can change the intensity of these profiles. These are intended to replicate several common combinations of print stocks and print processing effects. What makes ARRI Filmmap so user-friendly is the fact that any combination of the plugin settings at any intensity level will result in an authentic and pleasing analog feel. The gate weave slider will give you the slight unsteadiness you sometimes see in film footage. So I'm turning off all other settings by setting the sliders to zero. Now I will increase the gate weave slider and you will see this little unsteadiness. And if I take the slider back to zero, turning gate weave off. The last dropdown defines your color workflow. Since we're working on log C4 images, we did not need to change anything here. If we want to work on log C3 images, we can choose the log C3 AWG3 option. For other applications like Baselight and Nuke, you will have to change the color I.O. setting to linear AWG4 or linear AWG3, since the image handover happens in a linear tone mapping. So how would this work on images from other cameras? The only thing you would need to change is that you would need to convert the images from the recorded format to log C4. Easiest is to put a color space transform node as the first node on these shots. Before we jump to Baselight, I will show you how to convert footage from other cameras to log C4. I have one sample shot from a Sony camera here, which is in S Gamma 3 Cine S Log 3 format. So let's put a color space transform node in the beginning of the node tree and convert from S Gamma 3 Cine S Log 3 to Log C4 AWG4. So I will set my input color space and my input gamma accordingly. I did not need to set the output color space or the output gamma because I've set my timeline color space to log C4 AWG4 and Resolve will just use that for when in the settings use timeline is activated. I will also set the tone mapping method to none. And now if I apply the ARRI Film Lab plugin everything works correctly. So let's jump into Baselight next and work on the same images using the plugin. I will set up my timeline working space to log C4 AWG4 as well. And here everything just works the same, only that we have to set the I.O. space to linear AWG4 for the plugin to work correctly. Looking at the color space journey, you can see that the image is converted to linear before the plugin. The same is true for Nuke, which works linearly internally. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short tour. Please try out the plugin yourself and let us know what you think by commenting under this video. See you next time.